And Patrick and Emily, feel free to jump in with anything that I may happen to miss as we talk about our ability to communicate with legislators. And Patrick and Emily spend way more time on this than I do, but I wanted to point out a couple of things and I'm grateful that they asked me to talk about it because this is something that's really near and dear to my heart in terms of what we need to do as a profession to make sure that our voices are heard. And so I wanna start by pointing out a couple of things that are sitting on the General Assembly website that really do reflect that they want, they really want us to talk to them. This is right at the top of the General Assembly website. Um, they want us to, to reach out to them. So it's not just that we're kind of forcing our way in, but rather that they want us to share our opinion. And certainly when you look at what we have in the General Assembly, we've mentioned that there's one person that is a CPA in the General Assembly. That's one person out of 140 members. So we end up being the experts on this. And so it's very important for us to engage. And so part of that engagement requires that we start out by doing our homework. One of the most difficult things, um, the legislators, as you all know, are very, very busy, that we have to start by learning the process, the way bills work. You know, sometimes I think about looking at that, that old, how I'm just the bill kind of thing from Schoolhouse Rock, because it's so important for us to understand the committee structures and how bills are introduced and how they end up on the floor and those kinds of things. But more than anything else, we have to figure out who we need to be talking to. Because the General Assembly is in a short session, and we do have one of the shortest meeting legislatures in the country, and we, this is our long session this year with 60 days um, because they're dealing with the, with the budget, but take a few minutes to make sure you know who your legislator is. There's a tool sitting on the General Assembly website, who's my legislator, and you can just simply look that up. You can find out when you when you click that in, you put in your address and it tells you who your state senator is and who your your uh, House of Delegates member is. Understand it also has some federal stuff in there, too, but we're we're confining our information today to what's going on at the General Assembly. You get a sense of who this person is, even if you're like new to an area, you just moved, you didn't realize that you had this person versus another person, but it gives you some little bit of background, particularly with the, with the turnover in the house in particular over the last four or five years, we've seen a tremendous amount of turnover in the house. So you may have had a different person going forward into 2022 and we start, start thinking, excuse me, 2023, whether or not there'll be an election this year for the House of Delegates, we still don't know. But we, what we do know is redistricting is gonna bring you a new legislator. So, but for now, you can go use that tool. You can look at their bio, you can see what committees they're on and be able to, to know what legislation they're putting in. When it comes to legislation, I have to tell you that one of the sources that I use is Richmond Sunlight because it allows me to look at the specific legislator. You know, the LIS system works very well if you have a, an, an account where you can bring in all your bills, but Richmond Sunlight allows us to do a little bit more. And then connect with your legislator. You know, all of these folks are out there. They have Instagram accounts. They have Facebook pages. They are on Twitter. They have newsletters. So make an effort to connect with your legislator so that they know who you are. Um, and, and that way, when you reach out to them to schedule an appointment, they will understand exactly how the process works. So legislators contact their offices. It's important to understand that you're probably, when you contact the legislator's office, you're not gonna to talk to the legislator. You're generally gonna be speaking with their legislative aide or maybe their administrative assistants or even one of their interns. But go ahead and contact them, schedule a time to talk to them. These days, very few meetings are done still in person, but as, as Delegate Robinson mentioned earlier, some of the folks are actually in the building. If you happen to be in Richmond and are able to schedule a meeting in person, that's great because it's really wonderful to do things in person. We know how we've kind of lost that over the years, over the last couple of years of the pandemic, but the meeting itself may very well be a virtual meeting. And so when you're going through the process, think about how busy they are and how their days are and how they start out with 
usually meetings in the morning and committee meetings and 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 then they go into session and then they have more meetings. So their days are very long because the sessions are so compressed. Once you've arranged a meeting with your legislator, then I got a few tips for you to think about as far as what you need to be doing. First of all, it doesn't matter whether the meeting is virtual or in person, arrive a few minutes early. One of the issues that, that you may have, they may be able to see you earlier or they may be running a little bit late. So being flexible is so important. It is part of the process that Patrick and Emily see this all the time. They have a meeting with a legislator and something's come up. They've got another meeting. They had a quick subcommittee meeting or something like that that kind of causes them to run behind. So be make sure you're flexible when you're dealing with your, your legislator. Mention your connections. Mention who you're representing. Mention you know, what your profession is. Mention if you if you if if after looking at the bio, you may very well find that there's something that you have in common with the legislator. And so use that as a way of establishing rapport. Be a good representative when you go and talk about the issues of our profession. Remember, we're the experts. We are the ones that, that have the knowledge that perhaps they don't always have. So this gives us an opportunity to, uh, to inform them about what's important. Another issue is if the meeting is virtual, and so one of the things we've seen today is just this virtual meeting, think about your background images. Uh, think about how you're presenting yourself as you, um, as you are talking to the legislator. Today, we have the ability to do things like blur backgrounds so that you don't have the noise behind you. But think about that when you're having a virtual meeting. A couple of other things. As you can see, we've covered a lot of material in a short period of time today. When you have meetings with a legislator, you've only got a little bit of time. So think about the fact that your meeting may be a 15 minute meeting, but limit your message to about five minutes. Don't go any further than that. And because they have so much to go through. Yes, the LA may be in the room, may be taking notes, but part of the process is, is that we wanna make sure our message, your message gets heard. Think big picture. McNamara is, Delegate McNamara is our only CPA in the legislature. So don't get too technical about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Think about how big, think about the big picture because not the, we don't necessarily have accountants that can, that can grasp the details of all of this. And certainly if they need more detail, we are willing to provide it. But also think about that big picture when you're going in. Tell your stories. There's nothing that lives that that keeps something in a legislator's mind than being able to connect it to real, real issues, real people. So when you tell a story about how this process that you're you're advocating for affected a client or affected you, then it really or affected your employer. It's really important to be able to connect the, that to, so that the legislator can hang on to it. But there are some no-nos. When, when, when we're talking to our legislators, please stay away from things like campaigns and elections and fundraising and politics, because that's part of our legislators really, when, when we think about how, and I know this sounds, may sound like, um, like it's not true, but when it comes to the big picture of getting stuff done, getting stuff done, particularly for our profession, is about doing things across party lines. So we have to have good relationships, and we all should, should pursue good relationships with our legislators, just simply, regardless of what party they belong to, they represent all of us. So we want to try to have those, have those relationships and not get into the political ends of things. Once the meeting is over, take a couple of minutes to send a thank you note. Their time is valuable, but, but also it helps, it really does help to keep you uh, connected to them. Make sure you're following the legislation. Um, if necessary, send them a, a reminder email. This bill is coming to the floor. This bill is in committee. Hope you can support, that kind of thing. And certainly relationships are probably the most important thing. Relationships are access. 
There's no question that Patrick and Emily spend a lot of time developing relationships with legislators because that they'll take their calls, right? So part of our responsibility is to do the same. Our House of Delegates members are your neighbors, your friends. You make sure you have a relationship with them. If you don't, then make sure you try to figure out how to do it. Attend their town hall meetings. Go up when they're back in the district. Make sure that you try to develop those relationships. Sign up for their newsletters. Keep in touch with them. I'm always amazed that there's that we have 13,000 members, over 13,000 members in the general uh, in the VSCPA, and I think it's so important that we have our collective voice when it's time for something to get done. Uh, VSCPA has set up this voter voice tool that allows us to very very easily be an active participant in the advocacy. So they send out an alert and tell us. To, to go and, and send a message to our, our legislator, we get to sign up. You can actually, it only takes a little bit of a time. There's a sign up link there for you to sign up for the alerts if you're not getting them. And that way, when it's time for us to be able to, to put our collective voice, all 13,000 plus of us can actually move the needle. And when they hear from all of us, then, then we have a better chance of getting it all done. So I think I did my, kept mine to, to my limit to stay on time. Is there anything that, that we need to add? Uh, Patrick, Emily, anything that, we, that, you, that I left out? Vivian, I think you covered it very well. Um, there is one question in the queue that was, what do you mean by politics? You mean partisan politics? Because meeting with a legislator is of course politics by its very nature. Actually, I don't think meeting with the legislator is political at all. I think it is policy related, what we're doing. And I do think, I believe there's a big difference between policy and politics. Policy is, is what allows us to, to do the things that we need to do, like getting the conformity bill done, like getting the SALT, SALT workaround taken care of in the legislation. That's all about policy. It's not about Republican or Democrat or independent or libertarian. It's all about policy. So, so when I say don't talk about politics, and certainly it's not just my opinion to not do that. Um, if you look at guidance from the AIC 